All right, so it's early 2022, Elden Ring's just come out, and I'm trying to find some inspiration for something to build for it, you know, a weird controller to play it with. And uh, I happened upon this tweet from Wario64, who tweets out about a lot of like special deals on Amazon and stuff. Fisher Price Laugh and Learn Game and Learn Controller is $7.59 on Best Buy. Perfect for Elden Ring. I don't think he meant for anyone to take that seriously. Maybe he knew some brain broken person out there would eventually turn one into a controller. Either way, I'm that brain broken person. I took my broken brain down to the toy store. Sorry, Wario, I didn't use your affiliate link. I apologize. Jeff Bezos' omnipotent hands haven't reached New Zealand yet. Except for twitch.tv where you can follow me and watch my streams, yeah! Anyway, I went to the toy store and I got this. Oh, my camera's not gonna focus, that's fine. I went to the toy store and got this. <laughs> it ended up being an eight month journey of pain and suffering, but we're finally here. We're done. I'm here to make a video about it and tell you how it all works. Most of the stuff works as you probably expect. The ABXY buttons on the front, sorry. A, B, C, D buttons on the front, because God knows we need another button configuration in the world. They do all the face buttony things. They, they jump and roll and all that fun stuff. Heal for the hundredth time after you keep getting clapped by the same boss for the last eight hours straight. F Thumbstick moves around and the D-pad does D-pad things like choose your weapons and such. So you can see that the only visible outside modification is the uh, USB cable that you can see poking out the top. Now I did post some pics of this controller after I first finished it months ago. That little protrusion didn't exist then. Um, it was actually sitting really neatly on the outside of the case. But I managed to yank it out a bit too hard after I'd been fighting Redan for the third stream in a row and got really mad. Oh look at that! Oh my god I know how to dodge that move! Check this out. And I thought, I'm done for the day. Yoink! And degloved the USB port with it. Which is a great word, degloved. Don't look that up. So anyway, it doesn't look pristine anymore, but whatever. It's covered in grime and crap, so I think that ship's already sailed. Anyway, the modifications are on the inside. Let's take a look. Oh dear god, it's a fucking bird's nest in here! <laughs> this is gonna be a nightmare to put back together once I'm done filming. Okay, so first things first, I ripped out the batteries in it because we don't need those anymore because we're gonna be powering it through USB and that's gonna be supplied to the controller via an Arduino which also handles all the logic of the thing so it knows when I press buttons and when to send the appropriate signals to the game, right? And connected to that Arduino is literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I'm actually really proud of with this build is that I actually didn't end up having to put in any new sort of circuit boards or anything like that. I was able to piggyback off the existing circuit board by doing some really careful soldering and rerouting. Long story short, I was able to preserve all of the existing sound effects and god awful sounds that this controller makes. The worst of both worlds. <laughs> So the shoulder buttons don't actually come with any sort of electronic switches pre-packaged. So I had to add in a few little extra switches that the, uh, the shoulder doohickeys could just bump into when you move them the right way. Those function as the uh, bumpers and triggers by the way. So orange handles the left bumper left trigger and purple handles the right button uh, right trigger. So relatively straightforward but did require a bit of finagling to get everything in the right position. One thing that wasn't straightforward was the bloody thumbstick. The thumbstick that comes with the Fisher Price controller, it's not actually a thumbstick, it's just a button. You press it and then it plays a little song and dance for you. So in order to make it work as a thumbstick, I kind of had to rip the whole thing out and replace it with an actual thumbstick module. But problem is that the modules I was using were too big. They don't fit in the controller when you account for like the existing circuitry and everything else that's got to come with it too. So we had to trim down the circuit board that the thumbstick's attached to to be the smallest size possible and then 3D model a little enclosure that it can sit in while screwing into the existing body while also giving room for the switches on top for the orange doohickey there and we had to get it positioned just right so that the main we stalk make sure that we could of actually the thumbstick it in as well as give it a full right range of motion of, of the hole trimming down the actual blue thumbstick And of course it itself, replied so about a million different tests and unscrewing it, screwing it back in, and having and the we had to come out and have a Oh my god this thing is frustrating as hell. But it works and that's the main thing. Good job. Now if you're particularly aware you may be asking, hey Rude, there's only one thumbstick. 
how you're supposed to play Elden Ring with only one thumbstick. But I had an idea. There's a little yellow switch on here. Why not use it to reprogram some of the inputs on the controller? So when the switch is in the left position, the thumbstick works like the left thumbstick, right? It moves around and you can do clicking in and it counts as left thumbstick click. But then when you switch it to the right position, it works as a right thumbstick. And then you can use it to look around. It turns out I actually ended up having to switch the inputs for right stick and left stick in game because moving around and then switching modes and then locking on and then switching back and then continuing to move around proved to be a gigantic pain in the ass but uh you know that's fine that's why remapping is good accessibility is great by the way have i ever mentioned that where was i thumbsticks oh yeah not only could i reprogram the thumbsticks but i can also add in functionality for the start and select buttons sorry what are they called these days menu and share buttons the ones with the lines and the ones with the squares everyone just we just still call them start and select don't we i'm not that old Anyway, start and select and guide as well. The Xbox guide button thingy. We can program that in too. So when I flick the yellow switch to the right, the buttons on the face here end up being start, select, guide. Pretty handy stuff. So that means we can do basically everything that a standard controller can do with this Fisher-Price baby toy for babies that we are using to play the baby game, Elden Ring, that is for babies. You're a baby if you play this game. So this is a bit of a special controller, you know, a special run of Elden Ring. So we've got to create a character that is fitting for the part. What's more fitting than the human personification of playing and learning, which I went to name Fisher Price and then made a typo and called him Fisher Prince and it stuck. So we are the Fisher Prince. We are here to play and learn with all of the gods of the lands between. <laughs> and, you know, we started playing the game and it went pretty much like any other game i mean you know not having two thumbsticks is kind of weird but it's not too bad of a problem Dogs. to work around oh actually this will work no that won't work it actually started to feel pretty comfortable which is great because it means that you know there's some actual viability in this as a real controller which is kind of ridiculous and cool i, I like it ah oh! <laughs> double k o <laughs> I mean, having only one thumbstick isn't that big of a deal, right? Like, you can lock on with enemies and that kind of takes care of the camera for you. On the other hand, it's not enough pain and suffering for me. So when we beat Renala, it was time to switch up our stance a little bit. Yes! Oh! And go with a purely naked, no armor, whips only build, max dex, minimum vigor. That might be part of the reason why this run took eight months to complete, not in-game time, just so we're clear. But that's fine, at the end of the day, we beat the whole game with a Fisher-Price controller. Who can say they've done that? Anyway, here's the final fight of us beating Elden Beast. I'm pretty proud of this run, I think we did a really good job. It took a long time, but it was worth the effort. Holy shit, I'm alive! And you are close to not being that! BOOM! Ladies and gentlemen! Purple, white and pink, green, red and blue! Woohoo! Oh, and before you go asking, oh wait, but you, did you beat Melania? Yeah, of course we bloody beat Melania. Patience, name of the game. The start of the fight is just as hard as the end, so it doesn't matter what what her health is at the end of the day. Because they all die eventually, right? <laughs> Woo! So now I can rest and I can move on to the next controller and I'm really excited about that. Although, I think we've proven that this is a capable controller. There's probably plenty of other games we could play this with. If you have any ideas, let me know, drop a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see me try it with because uh, I'm kind of down to have more of this. There's no way that the, these sound effects could be any more burned into my brain than they already are. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I have not really gone to these links to make a YouTube video like this before, um, and I'm very nervous. So 
if you like it, please do the likey, commenty thing and subscribey thing, because um, that's very encouraging. And it tells me that maybe I should get into these a bit more often. So um, let me know what you think, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for being here. See you later.